When I was in kindergarten, I remember a time when a teacher brought a turtle to school. We were all on the playground, and they came up to us and asked if we wanted to see a turtle, and obviously we all did. This was a very formative moment for my love of science because of how this turtle shattered my worldview, and in turn, how curious it made me. As a kindergartner, I assumed the animals looked... The best way I could describe it is they looked similar to their emojis on a phone, even though I didn't have a phone. The, the way I, reason I describe it this way is because every book I read and every drawing I saw at that age depicted animals looking very basic. You know, snakes are always green and they always slither and they have the pink tongues and all that. I had assumed that turtles were green, very slow, and had a dome-like shell with brontosaurus-like legs sticking out. This turtle was completely different. Its shell was flatter and moved quickly across the ground. It had long nails and it wasn't green. This turtle was grayish-blackish and I distinctly remember a little bit of red on the sides of its head. Red, sorry. A little bit of red on the sides of its head. The teacher said that they were driving on their way here and saw the turtle crawling on the side of the road. It didn't occur to me then, but the road wasn't anywhere near normal walking distance to a creek, river, pond, or lake, let alone the walking distance for a turtle. Fast forward a few years later on a class field trip to a river. I'm not going to say the purpose for being there, but I do remember seeing turtles there. By then I'd seen plenty of turtles on the internet, and in better books and at zoos. And I found these turtles interesting because their color was still gray, but a bit brighter. Almost the same color as the dry part of the dead log which fell into the river. We went back the next year and I expected to see the same turtles. To my surprise, these turtles were different. I never saw any of the turtles up close, but they looked off. They were a darker gray. So why am I telling you all of this? Well, it turns out that turtles, despite being well known as common house pets, are somewhat complicated to take care of. They need plenty of water to swim in, ultraviolet light to keep their shell healthy, special food, an area where they won't freeze because if you use an outdoor pool and have the turtle swim in there, the turtle could freeze to death in the winter. Plus, because the turtle will spend most of its time in the water and will most likely poop in there most of the time, the water will also smell. This will be a problem if you had an indoor tub because it will cause the room the turtle is in to smell. This is an even larger problem because you can't really have it outside or inside because outside it would freeze to death, inside it will stink up the room, so you need the proper preparations. If this doesn't seem expensive enough, turtles live over... 40 years in captivity. So just to summarize, turtles are not the best pets for a beginner. One of the most popular pet turtles to own is a red-eared slider. Sliders are top-selling pets in many areas, and they're often bought without people knowing how difficult it is to actually take care of them. I don't blame them. I would be a terrible turtle owner. I mean, I can take care of a dog, but a turtle seems a lot more high-maintenance for something that small. Because of how underinformed people might be on how to raise a turtle, uh, the red-eared slider would die, be given away, or a third, maybe more problematic possibility. Oftentimes, red-eared sliders, as I stated before, the most popular, or one of the most popular turtle pets to have, oftentimes they are abandoned in the wilderness and because they can be more aggressive than native turtle populations, they will become an invasive species. This will sometimes drive native turtle populations to extinction or at least endangerment. I'm guessing you can see what this has to do with the two beginning stories. When I was younger, I got to see native turtle populations start to get replaced by red-eared sliders in the river. I've been back to the river since, and I still see natives, but there's always a lot of red-eared sliders mixed into there. But they're still living natives, so that river's not a lost cause. What I find even more interesting 
well, at least to me, I mean, this was an formative experience for me, was the first story. The reason why I find it so interesting is because the slider from the river could have been the offspring of abandoned pets. However, the slider from the first story was found on a road nowhere near a body of water and was still alive and healthy. That means someone probably dropped it off in the middle of the wilderness sometime right before it was found again. I also mentioned that the turtle had a bit of red on its head. Red-eared sliders have a lot of red on their ears, and that's why they are called red-eared sliders. This turtle was probably a bit older, and the reason why it only had a little red is because it was faded. But other than that, it seemed pretty healthy. I mean, I know this was back in kindergarten, but I still remember it. This was a very formative year for me, or moment for me. But it was pretty healthy when it was picked up, so I think that the turtle was probably taken care of by a responsible owner. And as it aged, the owner realized that the turtle wasn't dying anytime soon because, you know, they live up to 40 years and decided not to make it their problem anymore. To conclude this video, red-eared sliders are often underestimated in how much maintenance they need to be healthy. I myself was able to see how they were taking over many areas of the wild. I was lucky to see this. I mean, although this is a bad thing, but... I thought, found it interesting that I was able to see this invasion talked about in so many pet YouTube channel websites and reptile-based or just biology-based YouTube channels. I'm not, I highly suggest you do your own research into this topic and maybe think of a time when you saw something similar happening where you're from. As a disclaimer, I'm not a scientist. I'm just a guy with a YouTube channel. And I thank you for watching.